Warning, this show contains spoilers to really old games. You probably should have played them already. Warning again, these reviews are not reviews. This week on CD-ROM, we're playing a game where you're a little girl and you're looking for weed seeds, man. Water weed. Wait, you're a little girl in this game? <laughs> Jim, get with the times. Stars to, ref to refute that. Hey, everybody! We were just talking <laughs> about birds and worms. Welcome to CD Romp, a brotherly stroll through the PC games of the '90s and early 2000s. I've been singing the intro a lot, and now I feel like it's played out. So Good. I went to just speaking it, and I wanted to enunciate. Sometimes I go a little too fast. Mm. My name is Bob. Well, you can go fast and, and enunciate. Uh, here with me, tip of and the tongue with to teeth me. to mouth. <laughs> tip of the dick, tip of the toes. Excuse and here with me is my little brother. Yeah, I don't know who he is. Jamaica St. Croix, a.k.a. the independent human variable, a.k.a. Oh, wow. Bob, I, I, here's, uh, here's the thing. I, I, there's two things you need on, to know about me. Right, Bob? Wait, 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 wait. Rasputin's little bro. So are you Rasputin in, in this situation? No, but you're still Rasputin. Oh, I'm, also, I'm still like, Rasputin. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Rasputin's thicker clone. Okay. Bob. Say your name. Yes. Jim. Bob. 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 His name is Jim. Well, I can't Everybody doesn't clap for him. I can hear the crowd cheering in the background. Bob. Bob, there there's two things go. you need to know about the C Cat. to the H I M. Cat. It's that <laughs> I, I spin more rhymes than a lazy Susan. And uh, I'm innocent till my guilt is proven. Something like that. There you go. And welcome. We appreciate you guys uh, stopping by here for our little uh, podcast. Uh, yep. If you're listening, you could be watching. And if you're watching, you could be listening because we're doing this on video on the YouTubes, including gameplay footage and audio on the uh, everything else. Spotify, X, Y, Z. Jim, I think let's let's mix it up. Why don't you explain how this podcast works? Yeah, sure. So what are the rules? Yeah. We, yeah. We talk and then we hit the record button. Then we talk some more and, and yeah. then it's published. Right. That's kind of the abridged version. Um, yeah, that's one. That's kind of the. What about in terms of structure and purpose? Mm, what purpose. If had to Who put knows? Together really. a thesis. Uh, mm. Porpoise, also known as small whales. Um, no, I don't know if porpoises really fall into the whale category. Jim, are you going to make me explain this? Or are you going to do it? Okay. Do you want anyways, me to do it? Anyways, uh, yeah. We each sure. we play a game. Which is determined every you other you're week. Reading notes. On I this am reading notes from my brain. My mental notes. <laughs> Like I, I'm a, ahead, yeah, I understand how it works for sure, for sure. For Read sure. off that loose leaf. Yeah, yeah, it's so loose, baby. Um, we play a game for Is three it good hours. Good loose leaf, and then we talk yeah. about that game here. The person who picks the game is then responsible for uh, giving some history and fun facts about the game. And the person who did not know about the game beforehand will talk mostly about gameplay. And the choice of the game is determined yeah. every other week, hand in hand, step by step. And uh, yeah, day by day, step by step. Yeah, we take turns picking the games, and, and then sometimes uh, we go Bob off is also of, uh, the recos handler of the recommendation. Lord of the hand, not jobs, but well, they're they're kind business. of jobs though. Doing that crazy hand job, we'll just call them hand yeah. tasks, so, and everyone will know what we mean. <laughs> Wink. So speaking of which, I actually have a great way to start this episode. What is this speak, week? Episode, speaking of what if you're, exactly. Speaking of recos, you might think, Jim, what are you drinking? Tell me right now. Uh, it's scotch. Explain I, to the audience. I saw, ah, uh, was it like what, McLugan? No, I forget what brand it is. I'm what, not big what, on this. They're scotch. not vintners. I forget what they're called. Bre they're not brewers either. I don't Distillers. know what they call them. Distillers. Okay. Distillers. Yeah. Why uh, does it like, do this every time? What? what ask Every me time what I'm recording, because I'm always my USB, drinking something. No, one of my USB devices goes crazy. I also crazy. have seltzer from my Same. soda stream because I didn't feel like filling up the the filtered water thing. And now, then is waiting, that a scotch and, then and drink soda? Water. I guess is technically because this is seltzer, but I'm not mixing them in my mouth. I just seltzer. happen to be drinking both of them near the same okay, time frame. So you're having a scotch Comma. and a soda. Yeah. yeah. Comma. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so let me start. Let me start this week's episode now. For those of you short-term, long-term watchers, you probably saw today's episode and you said, "Hey, wait a second, 
where the f bombs is Resident Evil One? Mm. That's what I was promised at the end of last episode, which is Deus Ex. <laughs> let me hold on. Let me check us out. Let me, let watch me, it. Let me, let me fucking circle okay. back to the beginning of Deus Ex again because I just rewatched time. it again today. Time. Or re listened okay. to it mostly because I had it minimized. Yeah. I asked got you it. that day if you had the yes. game ready and you were like, yeah, Jim, yes. I got it ready. And then we got to the side I of the podcast. I actually said no. I actually said no. Oh, no. no. You said Roddy. I said Raddy. <laughs> and then you said, <laughs> like, I'm good. <laughs> you said, Are you Raddy? <laughs> yeah. Yes. This is like some Groundhog Day shit. And then once we started yes, recording the we, podcast, you were like, Oh, no, actually, I didn't pick the game. And so then I tried to give okay. you, I there stalled was a towards the end of the podcast to yeah. give you time to pick mm-hmm. the game. I was stalling. So I was, I was moving and grooving, scuttle butting, all the things You're to Joseph give you time. You were Joseph Stalin. Listen, yeah. I, I saw it. I, and I then you were like, it. no, it's well, okay. I got you. the list. I'll pick the first one. And well, then here's the thing. Here, here's You've the also thing. scolded me about this before because the list wasn't the problem. Picking the game was the problem. The fact that was I misremembered reality and I thought mm. that I already knew that you could play this game very easily, which it turns out you can't. Now, Resident Evil 1 is known as Abandonware, which means that it basically doesn't exist anywhere. <laughs> now, you could actually uh, download it for free from websites called like Abandonware Sites, and you could also get it off torrents. So I was I, only able to find one torrent and it had one, two, and three in a pack together, but I, I couldn't actually we, get it running. I, I looked a little bit Go on ahead, eBay, Joe. and it's like the only people that are really selling them on eBay are people that are selling like complete sets that like want a hundred dollars mm. for it. <laughs> Damn. So like that wasn't a thing, but I well, think if we actually went to like some sort of like retro gaming thing, which is why I sent you guys that info about the video game trading post. Shout out to the video game trading post of Long Island fame and fortune. Do they even have PC games? So not really. But that it just okay. kind of sparked my my head. I was I was just thinking about where we could get like an old PC game, and I was like, oh, let me see what VGTPTCPTC is up to. And they got like about to have th- their third Seems location, like too many letters. which is nuts. Yeah, that's pretty wild. Shout them out again because I was interrupting. You. Yeah, video game trading post of Long Island. I believe they have a location in Levittown, Bayshore, and then somewhere else, Massapequa. They're opening up something like that. Yeah. And they're opening up one in Bayshore. Yeah, I think it's going to be like the in, most recent one. The, one of them's like in a mall, like Mall of Amer- Mall of Massapequa or something like that. And there Probably was not a, Mall of America. But if you're in the New York, Long Island area, give them a Google video game trading post. We enjoy buying their things. They have a lot of old retro games. And you can sell them your things, things too. If you're looking like to unload. Special. You can you sell unload, your body like, to them you know, too if you want to unload. <laughs> I'm not going to well, say all over them, but like, you'd unload it. If you're them. paying... Well, we'll figure it out. Anyway, so what happened was James and I were talking and the options were I could continue to toil to try and get Resident Evil 1 working from, I'm going to tell you, I got it from an entirely legal torrent. And it was giving me trouble on install and I recorded it. I don't know if I'll put it up. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. Um, Or we could play the remaster, which they have available on Steam very easily. Now, I kind of felt like, and I think we both kind of agreed, like, "Mm, let's just leave it for now because the original is notoriously clunky and that's kind of the, I mean, appeal, really. Yeah, the original is so incredibly bad looking. (laughs) And sounding and everything. So we And yeah, I don't know if they updated like like, the uh, audio and shit, but like the voice acting is terrible. So I don't know if they just like upped the audio quality and kept all the actors or if they re-recorded shit or... Who knows? You know, they got plenty of money, so they could do whatever they want. Um, yeah, so we decide, you know what? We're just back burner it. And then, oh, what do we need to do on the fly? Well, it's been kind of a while since we played a game for kids. It's It originally. actually hasn't been that long, probably. But it's been knows? kind of long. but And we've only played one so far. And truthfully, it's a lot less than I thought we were going to. Because I, when, I, when we were, t- uh, what's it called? Uh, brainstorming blue, blackboarding whiteboarding brainstorming that one works brainstorming this podcast i was really pitching putt putt a well, putt putt game is the first game and then as we got closer i realized that jim was not enthused about beginning with a putt putt game right i don't think you realize so that they're not, not good and games. he ended up picking the wrong monkey island game no 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 no, no, no. and that's then actually the so there. such fucking revisionist history <laughs> hey listen let's for anybody that's curious in the backstory Go watch the episode, episode one of CD-ROMP. Go to CD-ROMP.com. You can find it or it's on the YouTube or wherever. But Jim, let's not even tell them that story. Sure. They have to go listen to the episode and find out. Sure, sure, okay? sure, 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 sure. Um, so now, in that 
kind of lane. And there's all weird tie-ins here, right? Okay, so I mean, there's not that many weird tie-ins. We ended up there's picking, one big tie. There's a couple. <laughs> there's a couple. Okay, so the first one is the name of the game that we did play, which you probably already know, is Freddy Fish and the Case of the Missing Kelp Seeds, which came out on October 28th, 1994. Now, this is uh, of interest to us because the producer and designer of this game was Mr. Ron Gilbert, patron saint of CD-ROM. Oh my God. Who was the found the co-founder of Humongous Studios, who also was the FADA, uh, part of the creative FADA, of the Monkey Island series. And the very first episode we did do was one of the Monkey Island games, although it was ones after he had already left mm-hmm. Lucasfilm Games. So it's not even really a Ron Gilbert special, but it kind but of, they you were, know. But the whole game was full of references link. to the original game. All of the jokes we didn't get yes, were that, based off of events that happened that's in the true. games he designed. So basically. Now maybe we would get the... Maybe we'd get the jokes more now. No, we wouldn't because we still haven't we'll played the first out. two games. <laughs> That's true. But we will eventually. So, oh, I mean, God. we've made our way backwards to go forwards because we played Maniac Mansion, which is the first notable Ron Gilbert game. So we're making our way through. Anyway, go watch those episodes. We already have Maniac Mansion we did. We already did uh, Escape from Monkey Island. I think that's that one. Um, check them out, the backlog. Anyway, Jim, do you have any... Um, uh, housekeeping, pre-show, anything before I get into um, the history of uh, Freddy Fish in the Case of the Missing Cup Seeds? Yeah, not that I can or remember F- F- off the cuff. K-S? Yeah, F-T-K, F- oh. F-T-K, pick S? Um, not narf, that I can narf, 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 narf. quite remember. All right, continue. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. All right, so this game came out on October 28th, 1994. Jim, your birthday is October 18th. 1991. Okay, I don't know why dots, you're doxing that information. I don't know if I so like maybe, that at all. Maybe for your third birthday, you would could have got this game. It's very possible. No, wait. It's in the wrong order. It comes out after your third birthday. Maybe as a belated birthday present, you could have got this game. But let's talk about the year 1994. As I mentioned, Jim was three years old. Oh, wow. Are you going to actually remember to talk about games of that era? I did. Wow. And well, no, things of that era, right? So, well, I had more prep time this time around than the last madness, which we'll be getting into madness again. Uh, well, we won't get into our personal lives, but it's very sexy and travel related. Um, the year is 1994. <laughs> Popular high grossing movies at the time. The Lion King, one of Jim's favorites. The Santa Claus. It is. One of my favorites. Yeah, it came out in 94. It was like the fourth highest grossing movie no, no, that no, year. No. The, the my favorite part. I didn't know The Lion King was one of my favorites. Yeah, you liked it when you were little. I mean, you liked uh, Aladdin more, but you I liked think this one too. I think all Lion kids King. like Disney movies. I'm thinking about this a lot. And I think it's because they're mostly yeah, just I mean, musicals. Yeah, they're good movies. And it's a good way for, just, it's, I, I don't know. It's like, kids you like look music. So I mean, it's really while talking about it right now. Huh? We're not, all right, let's not get Are you just it. saying this because you listen to Disney songs all day long every day? That's not you're entirely just true it? or false, but <laughs> I was going to say, because it's, I, I was, it's, I've been it's thinking about this recently, area. and I think that may be why, sure. I think taking that idea to the extreme is like the success of Coco Melon, you know, which is like all they did was is. come up with songs and they just like went mega. Wait, what is, what stratosphere. is that? All right, Bob, come on. No, what's Coco Melon? Coco Melon was we, a, like, a, a, well, they still Coco are, it's a YouTube Melon. channel. It's like animated yeah. characters of like a little kid. I think his What's name it is called? like JJ. YouTube? Yeah. Okay. And then like all they do is just like sing like kid songs. So they just have like hours of like songs about shit. But they're just all like kid song medley- medleys or melodies. I like medleys better. And so you could just like Which plop kids in front of, of it and, and they could just like s- listen to songs about taking baths or playing with toys for hours. And so there's been like a Dude, TV show. That's how you there's win. been... Uh, toy line specifically for it. Come on, man. I don't know any of that stuff until just now. I'm telling you something, though. I think we've done this all wrong. We've made the show for adults. We should have made a show for kids. In a way, we've because already kids started making to it for kids, kids if it's a game about over kids. Over and over and over. No, but I already dropped like 45 F-bombs. No, but you We've said earlier that you're not allowed minutes. to anymore. And then you said like, all what right, hun. No, I said and you laughed at your joke and I didn't get it. <laughs> and I skipped right past it. <laughs> Jim, you're a real fucking nimrod. You know that? Why? Okay, here's it. what I said. Yeah. You can't curse in Instagram 
ads. So yeah. if we were to boost one of our posts, you can't. And I was talking about the post that I put out today. And one of the lines that you said in that post mm. was, look at me now, hun. Well, I we haven't talked looked about at it yet, so. uh, Flight Simulator. Oh. And you also don't know your own words. No, I'm not listening when I'm talking because well, I don't, I'm not talking at me. So why do I need to listen to it? <laughs> That's good to know. They'd be like, what was that, Jim? I didn't hear you said. No one will know now. Yeah, and I didn't hear it. That's it. It goes oh, okay. into, I didn't it's look at Instagram ethereal. yet. ethereal. So. Jim, you're today. a real fucking... Well, I'm just as guilty a lot of times, so I can't even be too much of a dick to you. Also in the year 1994, the show, not I'm not a big fan, but you, know, you have to give it a nod. Friends started in 94. Popular games that year. You might have heard some of these, Jim. Have you ever heard of Doom 2? No. It's the prequel to Doom 3. And it also happened in 1994. Earthbound on the yep. Super Nintendo. Uh, Super Metroid on the Super Nintendo. Donkey Kong Country yeah. by Rare on the Super Nintendo. Or it might have been Rare. No, was, I think that was Rare sure. Rare at the time. Oh, Not that's sure. Interesting. And uh, another PC game, which is kind of why we're here. Warcraft Orcs and Humans. So good year for games. And this one came out. Now, um, we've already done a game by the same studio, which is called Humongous Entertainment before. So I'd recommend if you want kind of a longer backstory to go check out that episode of Spy Fox in Dry Serial. Um, but I am going to go over some of these in case you don't give a shit about Spy Foxes and uh, you still want to know about this kind of stuff. No, so Bob, I'll do it very briefly. I, I kind of have a, a question that I've been thinking about for the no, last Jim, three seconds. Gonna, while we've I not reached started the talking period. No, no, no. Actually, I'd like to jump in and start a question period. Do you think okay. it would kind of be uh, worth our time? Let's say we jump onto Fiverr and we hire like a quick like game developer, just like something mm -hmm. real quick. He can code it in basic, you know, just so sure. it's sleek. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. We kind of come up with adult versions of like old kids games and we call it maybe like Spy Fox. Jim. Hold on. You know? This is sounding very sleazy. And this, these are kind of like... As soon as you said adult versions of games, yeah. I was hoping this wasn't what it was. Right, but it is. So now hold on. <laughs> Okay, that, that's ahead. it. I'm, well, we haven't played Le Leisure Suit Larry, so we don't really know that realm yet. Mm, that's true. I think that game has and like a sequel or chronologically, two. Chronologically. Well, we do know a bit about maybe. Plumbers Don't Wear Ties. We do know a bit about that. Yeah. But that's not a PC game. That's what, so pa what's play. the Panasonic Shout system out, called? Uh, our, uh, the CDI? I think it's CDI, yeah. It might be the CDI. I don't think it's Panasonic <laughs> now that I think about it. Once in a blue, I'm good. I'll tell you that. Uh, shout out Angry Video Game Nerd. Go watch his channel. Yep, as always, shout out. Actually, if you only have a certain amount of time in your day, maybe watch him instead of us. But if you uh, have like a lot of time. Wait, no, but here's the thing. They would have had to already be watching us for us to recommend us. So you got to stop watching us they right now. They can stop now. No, right, right. <laughs> Actually, and then we'll know via the retention statistics. We can. <laughs> yes, right we'll now. know if everyone stops right now. And I'll let James Rolf know that I'm fucking sending him everyone over there. But we should get a cut of like, his, all send, of his views. I did you guys like. send nine people to my channel this month? <laughs> did you send one person to my channel last feeling. year? <laughs> <laughs> and it was actually you guys? <laughs> it was yeah, me stopping watching So let me talk to you about Humongous... Well, I could definitely see you stop to watch our video to watch Angry Video Game Nerd. What can I say? Well, he keeps it real, this guy. I'll tell you that. Let's talk about Humongous Entertainment because we haven't quite got to the game yet. Yeah, okay. But... Humongous Entertainment is the studio that made this game, co-founded by Ron Gilbert uh, from Lucasfilm is where he used to work, Lucasfilm Games. And uh, his partner was Shelley Day. She handled the business and financials and he did the game design. And I think he was credited at the studio for head developer, but he didn't develop every single game. They also started out with allegedly a $300,000 investment from EA Games uh, on the agreement that EA could uh, publish their games or put them out or sell them or some shit. Did like that, that happen? And what? So did, I guess did, so. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't know. You said it was so, under yeah. the agreement. I was like, I don't know. And he just, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, no. I didn't mean to say it like mysteriously. Yeah. That's just, that was like the deal. Like, under the guise that. of potential publication. Under the dark of night. Um. So, and the studio came to be um, Ron. And there's like a little backstory. Ron, uh, Ronnie, Ronnie G. He was actually watching Shelly Day's five-year-old son play Monkey Island. And he couldn't read yet. And the game didn't have any uh, voice audio. So it was only text. So he had like no idea what was going on. 
And he just really liked clicking his way around. And he said he kept like opening doors and clicking everything mm. around the screen. And he was just having like a good old time just dicking around. And he's like, wow, you know, maybe we should like it would be cool if we could make real adventure games, but for kids so that they can actually enjoy it. Um, and that's what they did. They went on to create Humongous Entertainment, which is very well known for their adventure games for kids. And it's very it was very important to them all the while of really trying to make real adventure games, not dumbed down storybooks, um, but easy enough for a kid. Are you do, giving praise or are you asking no, 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 a question? No, 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 no. I was raising my hand like I was in class. Fanning. Because I didn't, I didn't okay. want to step on you. Did, but I wanted to test my... You know, you already, you already started the question period earlier. So what makes you think you get another Oh, one? it's still question period. Okay, good. Thank God. No, no. Thank you, we gosh. already had it. it no, no, went, no. Yeah, but you didn't came, say end period. The gaming went. You didn't Sorry, end it. End period. No, no, no. Now start, start you missed period. it. Start period. Start period. No. <laughs> no, no, no. All right, go ahead. Ask your question. Yes. Can you name all of the humongous entertainment properties? Um, I can get pretty close, probably. Stop looking. And wherever you're looking, stop looking me. at your notes. <laughs> no, stop why? looking at your notes. I can do it. <laughs> it's going to help me to get my segue because I want to get the correct stop information. I knew this one already. Hold on. Okay. So stop looking at your notes. I must. Uh, no, I have to give the correct information. <laughs> no, I so want to test Freddy your memory to see. Oh, my gosh. All right. Freddy the Fish was the third um, IP for Humongous. They started with Putt-Putt. That was the very first. And then they did Fatty Bear, which didn't last very long, which is weird. But I have played it before as as a, as a ute. Um, then Freddy the Freddy Fish, Freddy the Fish. And then I believe was... Spy Fox and no, then Pajama Sam, I think, and then Spy Fox. And those are the big uh, IPs. And then Backyard Baseball and all the Backyard Sports. And supposedly some so sort of Blue Sclues property, question. which is weird. I don't, I guess. Yeah, that kind of sounds right too. They just right were, yeah, I, I guess, hired like to make a few games for them in like the late, like later that, yeah. 90s. I think like 96 through 99. Right. That does sound familiar, actually. Yeah, because we talked um, about it. So that was history. <laughs> Of Freddy the Fish, they don't really have. Um, I have like stuff about the game. Oh, what am I talking about? Yes, okay. So that was that mm, was you history. Don't history. About the game was, <laughs> no, I do actually. Okay, so now now we'll begin the portion of history about the game ah, rather than just the game. In general. The Kremen. Okay, okay. So this game, which is Freddy the Fish, etc. and so forth, um, seeds. This is the first of five, at least five, Freddy the Fish games. Five numbered editions. And then he had all of the spinoffs. I think it was like close to 10 games and all. Wow. Um, produced and designed by Ron Gilbert and a team of people. Uh, he was not actually one of the programmers for this game, at least not credited. Although I'm sure he was, you know, dicking around a couple of semicolons. Um, already mentioned that this came out after Putt Putt and Fatty Bear. The series has gone to gone on to sell over 2.5 million copies in total, and was a commercial success right out the gate, selling 2,000 2,000 250 thousand <laughs> copies by the year 1999, which was five years later. Which is kind of a strange measurement, but I guess they wanted to they wanted to show the 250, so they had to wait till 250 happened. So they did that. Um, the game, interestingly and uh, very relatedly enough, is made using Scum, the, skip, the script creation utility for Maniac Mansion that Ron Gilbert helped design at Lucasfilm Games. And the reason that they were able to even use it because it belonged to Lucasfilms is Ronnie Boy struck a deal with Lucasfilms and he said, um, I'll continue to develop this you know, and make it better and patch it and put on new features. And I'll continue to support it for you and give you all that. If you let me just use it for my games. And they're like, all right, fine. Okay. We're going to get this pretty much free. You're not really competing with us. We don't really give a shizzle. And I think we like you. So they did that. Um, and as we mentioned in actually a few episodes at this point, uh, Scum is a uh, scripting engine that allows you to write out how the game works in very easy to read ways. And then the engine is made behind the scenes in C++, something like that. But allows you to jump between different platforms very easily. Uh, most notably, they released this game in 2008 uh, on Wii as they did a number of the other humongous games. And it was a whole big lawsuit problem because they used Scum without the permission of anyone, I think. They were using oh, Scum lovely. VM, which allows you to kind of emulate Scum. It was a whole big to-do 
So it'll probably come up every time we do a humongous game. Um, every eventually time. at some point, I'm pretty sure they came out with this. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably just mention it over and over. Okay. And then uh, uh, at some point, I think they also came out with this for mobile. I think all the humongous games yes, are on mobile. Yes, we talked you about this on Steam. Spy Fox. Yeah, I played Spy Fox on my phone. I did not play this on my phone. Okay, but, well then there you go. Uh, as I mentioned, for Spy Fox, the game played pretty much identically except the aspect ratio was stupid and it wouldn't stay to the original and it was stretched out on my screen and drove me fucking ballistic. But besides that, if you don't care about that or maybe you had a resize on your screen properly or maybe they patched it by now, you could probably play this on your phone and have a pretty, uh, pretty okay time. At the time when the game came out, uh, critics were mixed. Game rankings gave it a 60% and Metacritic gave it a 70 of 100 Okay. Which some would call. I feel like that's good for a kid's and game. And some other though. people gave it like praise. It's kind of weird. Like, how do you rate a kid? Well, I think I I probably would have given it a better rating than that. But it's like, how do you rate a kid's game against, but against maybe other like, kids games or against like adult child's games? Mind, maybe. Well, that's true. Yes, that's why I'm <laughs> traditionally better at children's games than you are. That's true. Although I'm I'm gonna have the curtain come down. Yeah, Jim. Before I even started playing, Jim told me that he had beat the game and how long it took him to beat it. And then he also mentioned that he played with the credits for 20 minutes well, or something. Well, what is these spoilers you're giving out? <laughs> well, so I did that for a specific reason so we could have one solid clip of video so you wouldn't have to splice two together. Right. So I had realized that I beat the That's game. That's actually so- very easy to do, though. Uh, yeah, but it was... In- I don't know. It's it's not that easy. I didn't. I, I figured I mean, if I could do it all in counts. one, it's certainly easier than doing it in two. So you okay? This is how I add something to the end. Ready? Click, drag, and drop. And I this know, is what I like, have to do to find you using the BFG in Doom. I didn't ask you oh, to find. Well, well, maybe I will. <laughs> All right. So here is where I found my nope. fourth C urchin. No, nope. you son of a bitch. I'm wearing an AGDQ hoodie. It's okay? just a GDQ. Does that not oh, it is awesome. You? Okay. Sorry. Right. What yes, year is that? That's a 2019. Awesome. This is the newest one. Oh, is it? No, this okay. is 2020. This is the newest one. Oh, it's the newbie. You just For got it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. A couple of weeks ago. One nice days. But it's not a zipper. We're already wearing the doors off that thing. We talked about how you need no, a zip. No, it's a pullover, but... Yeah. I know, but, you know, I can't trust to buy a t-shirt online without feeling it. So, Because mm, of your sensitive hoodie. nipples. I know. I'm sorry. It's, I don't have sensitive nipples. Sorry. They're not sensitive. They're just... Jim, this is a family podcast. Okay, we can't talk about my nipples longer than 15 we minutes. We can. So They're make sure. medicinal and they serve a functional purpose. <laughs> They're medicinal. <laughs> Spiritual feeding. Yeah. So that's the background of Freddy the Fish. I think if Beer Gods be with us, we'll eventually, if if this keep going, this train keeps rolling, we'll eventually play all five. I have I have that hope. That would be that would be a beautiful day, because that means that we've have we've played so many other games. <laughs> and we made it around to playing all five Freddy Fishes. Here's the thing, Bob. And then we'll know whose cuisine reigns supreme. I would rather get to the point when we're playing things like, I, I don't even Freddy know, Fish like Ford. on a console before we have to go and play Star all Wars five Chess. Freddy the Fish games. Like Think I hope it. we're playing to StarCraft be fair, 64 before we play Freddy the Fish 5. To be fair, which we probably will as a special edition because that started as a PC game. To be fair... I have a lot of positive things to say for Shannon, and I will. But this is not my episode to talk about the game. I have now finished the game history portion. I'm now going to turn it over to my illustrious partner. Okay. Are you ready? Chimadaya, who will talk about his gameplay focused experience that you have been seeing over our heads. And you'll notice that this will all happen in one continuous cut because I was very generous (laughs) and courteous. And played through to give us time just depending, to just do it in one Depending long on how cut. long we talk for. No, I know exactly Jim, how I long I recorded for. And it even wrapped okay, around Jim, to the beginning I, credits again. And I, I do need to upload your curiosity. It. I forgot to. Okay, that would be good to do. I also forgot to play around in the credits at the end like you had mentioned. Uh, because I was like, all right, now i got to do this history. I think I... Did I do a little history beforehand? I already kind of knew a lot of history about Humongous. So I think I wasn't worried about spoiling or anything. Um, I don't remember. I don't know. But I'll tell you one thing. There's some things that happened in my life during this gameplay experience, but I don't want to talk about it yet. Okay, well, we can events. That's it's noteworthy. But I have you have to go first, and then I'll. All right. I'll well, I'm gonna get end. through mine, guys. Get ready for a heart- that, was, that was a nice guys, tease. Get ready for a heartwarming moment. 
Yeah. Oh. Guys, get set your dial for heartwarming well, later now in the I'm, episode. I might Jim? just steamroll that and not let you get a chance to warm any hearts. I like to keep no, my No, they hearts. have to stick around. I'm going to be checking cold. the retention numbers. Mm-hmm. Bob, I don't know so if you know how to do that. You don't have to like me. Jim, I know how to use YouTube. I'll okay? lie to I know you about tell you the retention or whatever numbers. you said earlier. <laughs> um, all right. So basically, Jim, you're like a fish. Tell me about your gameplay experience. All right. So you like a fish. Yeah. You start out, you fish. Wait, hold on. You gotta, first, you got to start out telling us what the genre all right. is. The, 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 the genre of the game is fish. Denial. It's like a fish genre. <laughs> <laughs> Not untrue. Um, so it's a kid's game uh, adventure, I guess. Point yes, and click. It is. Or pr- procedural. <laughs> procedural. It's definitely procedural fish. Game. Fish procedural, yes. if you will. <laughs> yeah, it's fish, if it's fish procedural. Oh, yes, I will. So you start the game with like a schematic, and then you um you go to like your grandma's house, and then she's like, "Freddy, yeah. I'm out of camp." <laughs> she doesn't say that. <laughs> you should basically say it. she's like, she's "All the gonna cows starve. <laughs> We're all gonna starve. It's the dust bowl all over again." <laughs> I'm all. <laughs> Uh, and then she gives you her last food that she has in the world, which is a peanut butter and jelly yeah. fish sandwich, which is cute. Sounds gross. Most, you know, jellyfish. It is cute, though, but it sounds, dis- sounds disgusting. It makes me want peanut butter, though. Well, and jelly, peanut well, butter and jelly. outside of my it's feeding period. Jim, I make a lot of peanut butter and jelly flavored things. I've been like doing protein puddings. Protein? Peanut butter. Peanut- <laughs> Made real crows. Buy bodyguards, four bodyguards. <laughs> I like peanut butter and jelly flavored protein shakes, puddings, you name it. I just a like shake peanut butter jelly flavor, but I don't eat a I don't eat a lot of peanut butter and jellies. But I like the flavor in ice creams and other kinds of products. Mm. So that's just something to know about me. Okay, day. that's good. Was that the heartwarming thing that you realized <laughs> during the game? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but it, but you know, it's funny when she said it in the game, it made me want to eat peanut butter and jelly, mm. and now it also does so. It's a callback, I it guess. It did, yeah. It did kind of make me want to do that too. Now, are you right? a, are you a uh, smooth guy or are you a ch- uh, cruncher? I thought you were gonna ask me if I was junky. No, no. It's a, it's a loaded question. The answer is yes. Um, you know what? I enjoy chunky, crunchy, but I think you know smooth is tr- traditional. No, really. no, cauliflower is not traditional. <laughs> <laughs> Did you make little X's in the bottoms of them? Uh, Jim. Yeah. yeah, so you start oh, out. You're not a crunchy guy, are you? No, I mean, we grew big up together. crunch. Or, Only crunch. Really? Go crunch or go home. Really? Oh my gosh. But here's the thing. My favorite peanut butter in the world is Whole Foods fresh ground honey roast peanut butter. Yeah. And it's got like a grit to it. Yeah. And it's like That's more crunch than it is smooth. the best. Yeah. But yeah. it's not crunch. It's, it's no, grit. No, no, no. Yeah, it's real. Sometimes. It's delicious. Right, right. But at that, I, just for like eating and just like. Well, yeah, that you just eat. That's just food. That's just normal time. food. That's just a food. <laughs> but when I make a peeb and jeeb, <laughs> I want like a, you know, <laughs> get up. <laughs> <laughs> I want, you know, like a ghetto, you know, like a skippy, mostly corn no, syrup. Oh my God. Type, uh, I went back and tried boy. to try. I tried to try like a skip. Or yeah. like a jip. Oh, you wait, you tried to I try. I tried to try it. I, like, uh, so you literally didn't even try. You aimed to try. No, no I, I aimed and succeeded. So I did try. Yeah. Okay. And they were like so like fake tasting. Like like compared it to like yeah. like a soda, a soda and like a diet soda. Yeah. It like that. Yeah. It had like almost like an aspartame kind of feel to like the regular it's more natural like, peanut butter flavor that I'm used to having, you know? It's it's more like pizza and pizza flavored things like when you have pizza flavored pringles you Why say is that, it that like, pizza flavored stuff never ever tastes like pizza ever be, what close. do you think they're gonna inject pizza into it they're what they're doing is using like t- they're using uh dehydrated tomato what, paste, oregano probably oregano and cheese powder as well it doesn't work i don't think well, we yeah, should it ever work done it. I mean. it, it's the worst flavor approximation ever like wow worst flavor worst? you can't ever do it i don't know what yeah. are those combos I mean, what about those combos that are like pizza combo those are pretty good aren't they i think they do like pepperoni pizza combo but I, it still it doesn't yeah. taste like com- i haven't had combos in a while i know that's like real gas station food it is those are good though uh, only gas stations ones. eat it yeah 
<laughs> yeah, Jim, I agree. So anyway, let's so go anyway, back. You're a we fish. Talked a little you bit start out. You're it's a making fish. me fucking starving for a peeber jeeber. Right oh, now, are you trying to get peeber jeeber? Which I will always call it. <laughs> it's literally like making my stomach hurt. I want what's so bad. I can't eat jeeber. again until noon tomorrow. So, what's going on in his head? Yeah. Okay, um, so she gives you her last peanut butter and jellyfish sandwich. So in the this world year, grandma says, hey. literally has no food left in the world. It is dire straits right now. I think she said like no one has any food. Yeah, left. no one has food because she's like the town kelp grower or some shit. And then she's like, "Freddie, I Weed. I buried my treasure kelp seeds somewhere." And then I wasn't really yep. paying attention, and I guess no, someone stole it. Yeah. So, okay, I was going to get to that. Bob, this is supposed to be my part, Bob. There's no, like, you can't get to it because you see, you're you saying it wrong. I'm not. I There's, was about to say, yeah, I'm pretty sure someone canon. stole it. All right, sorry. You said that she buried it, I think. And well, I yeah, she put it in a, in a treasure chest. But I, I wasn't sure where she put it. But I know for sure it was taken by the two sharks. They're the main antagonist okay. besides the chief boss, which yes. I'll get to later. Well, shark antagonist, but yes, you're correct. Sure, true, 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 true. And they're like two yeah. classic, like, uh, they kind of have like a, a Two Stooges vibe. There's one who is like a Mo, and the other one who's like a Gordy or whatever the other one, one of the other ones are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. The <laughs> Mo, Larry, and Gordy. <laughs> How can you forget? Uh, Sitting around eating your peeber jeeber, watching Gordy on the old boob tube. No, is, isn't there one that's like hit Hemlock or something? What's one of the temporary ones? <laughs> <laughs> temporary ones <laughs> what are you talking about no there's Mo Larry this Curly and there's like Grimlord Mo <laughs> Larry Curly <laughs> in all my days I've never ever ever heard someone say they thought Hemlock was one of the three stages names now you know Grimlord is the one of them. come on that wasn't a real guess Shemp. This there is you one go. Of the sorry, brother. sorry. I, knew but was... I think they had like a mess. They had like a mess of brothers rolling around. No, no, so there was, was like, like four. A... There was just like four. Darnold. Darnold. I think like... there was another one. No, I think it was just like the four. I, don't... I think they. I think there was one other one. I think you're thinking of like the Marx brothers or the Pet Boys. <laughs> I think I'm not thinking of the Pet Boys. <laughs> I, I think, think you're thinking of the Pet Boys. <laughs> anyway, two of the pet boy maybe sharks. Grim, maybe Grimlock <laughs> is one of the pet boys. <laughs> oh, so sorry, it's Grimlord. Sorry, Grimlock. yes, yeah, Death yeah. Knight and Grimlord. Apology actually not accepted, but please continue. Yeah, uh, and so they're like a classic. Like one kind of has his stuff together, and there's one like kind of a heavier idiot type. Yeah, which is like it's like classic, like you know, old timey Hollywood. You know, like 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 Abbott and Costello in, uh, kind of situation, and like you know, yeah, yeah, same thing. They had it in uh, Bugs Bunny cartoons and Looney yeah. Tunes. There was one guy who's like, "Shut up, shutting up, rabbit." And the guy's so like, "Yeah, it's, it's, it's that kind of dynamic." Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So they're pretty fun. They're pretty fun. And there, there's one guy who's like, "I don't know. I left a message in a bottle to lead me to give me clues on where I hid the treasure." And then yep. you find the message in the bottle first before they get there to go get back into Accidentally, their... Accidentally, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then that sort of sets you on your way and it gives you like a clue and then you have to go navigating through this world. So the, it's it's a point and click. And the beauty mm. of the game is that like almost everything on every screen is interactable with just little things that'll pop out, things that'll it's happen. It's wild, yeah. It's really like a perfect game for a kid that just like you yeah. can click all over the place and like... Things will happen over and over again, but like will be slightly different. Mm -hmm. So like you click on this like uh, shell and like a crab will pop out and it'll like wave to you, let's say, for example. But you click it again sure. and another crab will pop out of like a little bit different color and wave to you with his other hand or something like that. You could be in like a mariachi band. Yeah. And you can do that like eight times. And this is just like a great way for like, especially when like you're a kid and you don't you're not sure how to progress the plot, but you just want to keep interacting with things. And even if you click on the wrong yeah. place, you still get a lot of feedback from the game. So like this, you input things and you're getting things back. Even when you do things wrong, you're getting positive feedback. So I think it's it's like a good game for kids to keep them entertained and to keep them engaged. Definitely. It stays true to their original, what do you call it? The... Uh, idea and we've talked about this a lot the kids like being there in the moment just having fun more than they are plot yeah. 
driven. So yeah, and it, so it's it's not a so very much complicated plot. Stick around it's, with. it's basically like you go and you find things on the ground or a part of the environment. <laughs> That's so sad. <laughs> You just so, find things on the no, ground. You find, you find different dirt, items and, and, you, and you um have to use them in different situations. Like um Yeah. I, I can't even think any any of the good examples of the items that I, I can I give used. you one example. Sure, sure, in, sure. In this one area, you have to push this gargoyle and it opens locked door that lets you go down to the dungeon where your other friends have been kept. I'm sorry, what game did Sign, you play? That's actually from Maniac okay. Mansion, one of our previous episodes. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I, I'm going to go back and watch you face your life. <laughs> you were trying things so hard. Oh, uh, ah, that's, that's funny. classic. No, here's one of the things. You pick up purple sea urchins yeah. and use them to fill up a bucket. And the bucket pulls a, a rope that lifts a thing to let you go into another level. Well, no, so here's, like here's a better thing. You know you need to it's get very up. very procedural. Yeah, you need, it is very procedural, okay? Uh, this time you know is. you need to get the the um the manta ray or stingray tells you he needs a clock and so you go find a clock somewhere else so he you give him the clock and he gives you a button to open up the net yeah. to get the pearl to give to the king to give you another note i never did that part i never gave anybody the pearl yeah you I give the, the pearl, pearl to the never king to crab oh shit i never even did that How well you don't you don't have to because he just gives you a clue of where to go uh, okay, because I'm super smart. I didn't even need to do that. I I, I just I think tried... his name was like Man Ray. No, Man T Ray. Ray Man. Ray Man, probably. Yeah. <laughs> I think his name was like Ray. Oh, Ray. He's a man and his name's Ray. Hey, I don't Ray. Bob, you know what I learned the other day? That do you remember the game for N64 Tonic Trouble? Mm-hmm. That game was actually made by the same studio, I the development team, I guess, that made Ray Man. And they really? made that game basically is the precursor to Rayman to see if it would be a success or not as a game. So it's very Here's similar model and it was and like um it, it was kind of like a proof of concept to see if like a Rayman game could be good. Yeah, but here's the idea. Or here's the problem I have with that. Mm -hmm. That came out way after Rayman did. Are you sure about that? Yeah, the first Rayman came out a while ago. Okay, when did like the early Rayman? 90s? Are you sure about that? Or so maybe just on console? Because I heard about this yeah, when someone was playing make, Tonic Trouble. Would, that would make sense. Like, oh, let's see if we could do Rayman in 3D. And that's how they tested it. That would absolutely make sense. Uh, Jim's talking about a game for N64, so just strike all this from your verbal record. Um, I wanted to say something else about what you were saying. Oh, Jim, we should probably mention, because you still didn't talk about uh, the main characters. Yeah, Frederick... R fish, mm -hmm. which is actually a girl. Freddie is a girl. I didn't. Fish, I didn't know that. Fish. I don't see fish gender. Yeah. So her voice sounded very. Could be a young boy. Could be a young girl. Yeah, but I. Yeah, I just figured it's just young fish. Supple. I don't really think about fish in like a sexy way like you do. I do. That's why I had to know. No, that is an underage fish. And then she has a friend, uh, kind of her partner in crime, Luther. Yeah. His name of the other fish. So I don't even remember when I first... Well, oh, I'm trying to remember when we even picked Luther up in the game. Immediately. You go into like the second screen. Okay. Luther's the one that actually ha knocks down the bottle that you discover because he's oh, okay. trying to do backflips. Oh, he's, okay. He's the one doing the backflips. Right, right, right. Okay. That's okay, him. Okay. Yeah. And he couldn't Luther, figure out how to do a backflip. That idiot. He kept knocking into a rock. Yeah. yeah. Now idiot. I remember. You're right. You're right. Luther to me is... Uh, uh, Tina's really into Christmas with the Cranks. Well, it's a recently. great movie. And by recently, I mean the next couple, recently couple of years, she's got me a little bit more into it. It's I'm I'm easing up on it. Are, is there anyway, a bad Tim the Allen movie? Name's Lou, <laughs> a, a bad Tim Allen Christmas movie. And the uh, main character, dude, Tim Allen's name is Luther. So when I hear that, I think I Christmas thought of Luther Cranks. Vandross. Mm, yeah, sometimes I thought of that, but more Christmas. And then I thought of like, Andross Luther. from Star uh, no, Star Fox. <laughs> And then you're off to the race. Yeah, and then I was gone in another world. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, Jim, please continue your uh, gameplay experience. You're going around with Freddy, the fish, uh, Luther, the other fish. Yeah, and you're, you're two trying. sharks are trying to chase after you, and you're looking for. So they're not for... chasing after you. Every once in a while, you will get a cutscene, which was invented yeah. by Ron Gilbert and his team. According to Ron Gilbert, 
Yeah. <laughs> it was invented by Ron Gilbert. Uh, yeah, according, yeah, according to Ron Gilbert, invented by Ron Gilbert. In another, and then now we're playing another Ron Gilbert game. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, every once in a while, depending on how far you get in the game, they'll give you like an update on what the sharks are up to. And eventually they get like mad and they have to go to their boss, who's like the King Squid or something. I forget what his name is. Squid, the Squid Father. Thank you. I Sorry. thought you were about to bungle that one. And then he's like, <laughs> I'm a squid. You guys are doing bad. <laughs> You're just doing a Michael Scott impression right now. Uh, I Because he doesn't even speak words. Yes, he does. No, he doesn't. He goes, he just makes sounds. Are you sure you played the same version I did? What version you played? The one in Singaporeanese? Maybe. That's what I had turned on, dog. Hmm. Okay. I'm pretty sure he doesn't talk. And they're like, what do you mean? Come on, we're trying our best. And he's like, bah, 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 maybe bah, I just bah, bah, speak squid. And that's why I could understand what he was saying. I, think I didn't you, even realize. You want, I think you this could be. I think you wanted him to sound like that because I also did. I thought he was going to be like, this is the day of my calamari's wedding. This is like but the whole this is the that. whole conversation again about me watching Squid Game in, uh, what is it, in Korean? Mm-hmm. And then I, there's a part where there's like English people and I don't remember if they were speaking English or not or if they were also speaking Korean because I don't realize when it turned back to English because it didn't seem like a change to me. I can just absorb the English. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I can, I can understand that. Um, that, uh, you know, speaking of what, which, what doing that voice, there is a lot of New York ethnic characters in this movie. I mean, in this movie, in yeah, this but game. That's, that's just like, like a Italians. rough and tumble type of accent. It's supposed what to be, about, right? What about, Jim, what, what would you comment on, uh, uh, I think it was Herman the cra- the crab. The oh Herman yes, crab. I did take mental note. He's I'm not even gonna do it, but he- <laughs> he's like, "Oi, my shell! He's, it's I all can- the light. I can't sleep. I it's did, driving the, me crazy." The Shining. Uh, yeah, it was yeah. pretty great. He may have been Jewish. That guy. I think he I may think that was been. the intention. Yeah, or it was a Jewish guy not trying to do a character. Maybe that was just him. Yeah. Yeah, and he was supposed to be like from South. The characters from South Dakota, but the guy doing the character, maybe, maybe, is a Jewish guy. Yeah, uh, that's why it seemed like very New Yorky. But the, it's not the studio is not from New York. I don't know where it's from, but I was like, "Where's all the New York hair? I feel like my home." Hmm. Italians and Jews, but, uh, and- but yeah. So you you progress through the game. You kind of find the items that the that the characters or situations need, and then mm-hmm. uh, eventually you find your way to the uh, pirate ship, which is like the last stage of the game. Yes, I'd agree to that. And then you give the uh, walking stick. You give the the ukulele to the guy with the walking stick, and you give the walking stick to the guy with the ukulele or something like that. And the- this is very interesting that now you've gone very specific at the very end here. Well, because towards the end, I realized you didn't talk I was about in the last all the stage other of the game. Things. And then I was like, I need so to really draw more. this out. <laughs> I, could, I, thought, I thought you say I got to really start paying attention here because I got to talk about gameplay. And so I listened and I to the song that he sings about like three times, which is kind of good. And I don't even remember the what he was singing song? anymore. Oh, yeah. The ARG song. Yeah. I wished it was better. I thought it was pretty but good. But it was fun, I guess, for a kid. And, and Jim, you know give what's me a funny? little rendition. And it's ARG to the left and I ARG to the right and I ARG in the middle and I ARG day and night. Something like that. That's close enough. Close um, enough. And they actually give specific like writing and performance credits in the end credits for uh, the ARG song. For that song. Yeah. I hope someone got a little check for that ARG song because that's essentially what it was. And he's like, sometimes what I like to do is ARG. And then yeah. ever, all the kids go, ARG. So it's fun for the kids. Uh, yeah. And so you uh, get to the like the middle of the pirate ship after you open mm-hmm. the window and then there's the treasure and then you bring it back to grandma and then she, you help her sprinkle the kelp along the land. Incorrect. Okay, you carry the tre- open treasure chest back to her as it sprinkles kelp upon the land, turning it into <laughs> bountiful correct. forests of wheat and chaff. Yes. Yeah, they don't really explain why all the kelp in the world is gone, but also she has all the seeds. So she almost seems like some kind of like land baron or what something. What if she is she kind has of like all an- the seeds? What if she's like What's a, the opposite a, of a serf? Some sort of a goddess, a goddess. But then, like some sort of why pagan need... god in charge of kelp. Pagan. Did pagan Maybe. have like underwater gods? Did, did they? Or are they just all above? I've not above ground? chatted with pagans. Well, here's the thing: how would they go underwater to interact? They with hold them? their head underwater and then talk to them. <laughs> yeah. 
That was a slowed down Murloc. <laughs> Go get this guy some yogurt. Get this guy some yogurt. You know, I've been doing a lot of Greek yogurt lately. I just had Eat some Greek yogurt. Uh, it was percent? Greek. Yeah, it was Greek. And some uh, you have granola. Yogurt. Regular yogurt's out. You know what the problem is? I really need to have like flavored like Greek yogurt because it gets like sour, you know? Reg- yeah, right. I don't like it that tart. Sad. Like I, I like I like the but ones that have like fruit mixed in, in. You know what you should put in yours? PB two, powdered no. peanut butter. Make peanut butter yogurt. No, I don't really like mix that, it. And then you have to like make sure all the powders and mixed blueberries. in. And then like otherwise well, you get like little... chunk chunk of dunk. No, there's no I just, chunks. I just, just put like granola. I just put granola in. And I'm good to go. Granola is all chunk. Yeah, but it's chunk. It's consistent chunk. Well, I guess you said you did like crunchy things and smooth things so yeah that does make sense listen here's what you do okay frozen blueberries no you don't even have to warm them up put them right in dump them in here's what you do dump, just oven roasted blueberries <laughs> oven roasted frozen blueberries yes yeah. all right so that's the end of the game <laughs> And Double then it man. cuts to end credits. <laughs> See you next week. Yes. It cuts to now end you credits. You have a lot to say about these credits because uh, you played them for 20 minutes apparently. Yeah, pretty much. You'll, I think at this point you'll probably start to see credits. Okay. Um, Tell us about it. Yeah. So the fish go by left and right on your screen, a couple different kinds of fish, and you can click on them and they'll do different things. They'll blow a kiss. They'll spin. They'll do a loop-de-loop. They'll shoot back off screen. Then they'll also be Tell big bubbles and little again. bubbles. The little bubbles will either pop. Or they will dance around. And the big bubbles, we either pop into little, little bubbles with a sound effect, or they will turn into other humongous games properties, including Putt mm. Putt, uh, Shit Bear, and Honey Fly. I don't it's know. It's Fatty Bear. <laughs> Is that better? <laughs> yes. Is that supposed to be better? <laughs> at, least it's, at, least, at least it's accurate. I think that was one of the things, the reasons why they didn't continue with Fatty Bear too, because it was like Fatty Bear. They yeah, thought it was like it was making fun of him. Yeah, it's so just like, not. It's not like a, the bear. Yeah, I don't know. A nice yeah. adjective. It's like not like yeah, not not like a great game. I get that it's like kind of. Some catchy. people don't like being called fat. It doesn't bother me really. Hmm. But like if you are fat, why dance around it? I guess maybe you don't want to. If be. you're not fat and someone's calling you fat, then I can understand being frustrated. No, but then why? Because like, it's not even true. So it's just they're just lying. Well, that would be frustrating. I don't like uh, to be lied to. I don't know. That seems like it's their problem if they're the ones saying something inaccurate. So what we're trying to say is, don't let cyberbullying bother you or regular bullying. CD ROM. Jim, I have some. Um, I have some notes about general things, here. like general relativity um, or. Would you say I actually have no notes about general relativity? Oh, okay. Here. All right, that's fair. Would you say that your um, gameplay experience has been conveyed? So I can go over these notes. Or do you also have other notes you'd like to cover? No, uh, I, I'll give a few, a few other. Uh, Please. Yeah, uh, I would say that I, even though I'm not a child, I mean, I hope I hope that's mm-hmm. evident. I did enjoy yeah. playing and interacting with this game. I think the puzzles were like just barely not straightforward enough to where it's like. It's not like here's a circle, put it in the circle hole. It's like just barely more difficult than that. That like I actually had to, <laughs> it's like next to the circle hole. Yeah, right. It's so like I did it. I wasn't completely bored about problem solving this stuff, and yeah. I think the environments all looked good. They were really fun to interact with, and uh, the and character agree. voices were all fun. Um, the graphics mm-hmm. are like animated and stylized in a way that I think holds up because it's basically looks like a cartoon i can comment on this jim um okay hold on um so overall i think i I enjoyed playing the game um i'd play another freddy fish game but it's funny because i was when i was playing it wow here you go as soon as i started i i this you could tell me if this is untrue but i don't think i've played a freddy fish game before i probably just don't remember it i don't think so we might have had it but but we were we were a putt putt family really um <laughs> dad wouldn't let us play anything else but putt putt get back in your room and play putt putt yeah um but Go it's to it, the parade. it plays essentially like the same method and and i don't think that's necessarily a detriment because kids when they're playing this will never realize that they're playing the same game but it's structured in a, i think they figured out the structure of like kids game to where it like works really well Kid adventure game, yeah, that's yeah. they are the the premier kid adventure game shop. But it like for it sure. functions like the same way that like a putt putt game, like it's just yeah, like so mapped out. If you played out. one, you're like, okay, I know how. Yeah, 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 I know how this is gonna go. Yeah, 
Same as Spy Fox and everything, yeah. The Spy Fox, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I will say you could definitely tell the difficulty level how different it is from playing Spy Fox and playing this. Spy Fox, you do scratch your head a little bit. Yeah, a yeah. Little walk I, I was gonna. Like, that's why I fuck? paused a little bit when I was talking. What you know, meant you mentioned Spy Fox because I think that one does take a little bit more thinking. You need to think, not necessarily just this guy asked you for a fishing pole, so you have to give him a fishing yeah. pole. He's like, I'm not ready to use that yet. Yeah, yeah. I don't think that will help. Yeah, and I think there's some That's good voice Fox acting impression. across all the games. I mean, I, I haven't played a putt-putt game now in a number of years, but I, I, I will extrapolate the and assume that. voice acting's fun. It's probably it's some not, good voice you know, acting, too. It's not, you know, sanitarium confused child voice hey, acting. Hey, sanitarium was great. I, I don't, you I, have we talked about sanitarium in every game since playing sanitarium? <laughs> Well, because you love it so much, and it's also one of our worst performing videos. That is true, but it, people should play it, that I game. I think it is a really I think interesting it deserves game. More praise. I agree with you there. I do think it's a very interesting game. Oh, I, also, I do think it features some of the worst voice acting, and some really good. Not that's not the average experience, but some of it is really bad. Yeah, I think they create such an I, amazing ambiance, just like the sound, the sound stage that they create. And you know? we came into the nickname Stumpy, you know, which we still keep with us. We do. Okay. To this day, says Verdang. Um, do you mind if I touch on uh, what you said about the visual stuff? Yeah, I think that's basically all I wanted to communicate about my gameplay experience. Okay. Yeah. So originally, this game was made visually um, pixel by with pixel art, pixel by pixel, uh, MS DOS, in the same way that the earlier Putt Putt games and Fatty Bear games were. And uh, I don't know about how far into production. Let's say three quarters to production. Mr. Ronnie G went to a some kind of expo or something, and he saw how people were digitizing hand drawn art and then coloring it in the computer. And he's like, "Holy balls, we got to do this!" So he went back and was like, "Here's the thing. Are you guys up for this? Because I'd kind of like to remake the entire." Now, game. Bob, if and I can like, interrupt you for a second, I know exactly what please. what conference slash like expo, or whatever you're talking about. You do, yeah. It was actually held by do you know who? John Romero. Really? I'm lying. No, I'm lying. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Holy shit! We're no, learning all over the place now. Lying. We're starting to link things together." Oh, because I guess John Romero. <laughs> Yeah. Jim, let me have my one victory in life. I got <laughs> that, that was crazy, man. I'm still so that impressed. That was you got crazy. That. So am I. Yeah, yeah I'm never gonna. I right, continue. Gonna I just thought you'd, 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah. So the way that it works is, and apparently this is a very similar process to what they used on Cuphead these days. You draw it right in black and white. You scan it, and then it digitizes, and then you clean it up digitally, and then you color it in digitally. Okay, And that's how they did things for this game. And that's apparently how they did things for Cuphead as well. And apparently there was like a a team of like assistant art people that did all the cleaning up and scanning and boring parts. Okay, But you could see if you look online, you could see the before and after. And it looks totally different. Uh, Looks really good. It looks very kind of like Disney-ish animation, I guess. I'd kind of compare it to earlier Disney-ish stuff. Okay. Um, but they did a lot of really nice visual stuff that they didn't have to do. Um, I noticed in particular the scene transitions. The fish never just like walk off the side of the screen. They're always like mm. boom, yeah, getting yeah. bigger and smaller and scale. And they'll go in front of the foreground and behind the foreground. Just like really pretty looking uh, for no other reason besides that just looks really nice. So I did appreciate that. I didn't notice a lot of, if any, repeat animations or things that looked lazy. Everything was very visual. Um, I'd say the good, and this kind of touches on what you had mentioned. The game really appreciates you just being there, chilling with it. Yeah. Although every so often, Freddy would be like, we really should find the treasure chest. (laughs) A lot of other times, it's just like, and then just, there's a lot of steel drum being played. It's, I don't know when that decision was made that like, Coastal slash tidal sea, like the sea is just all see steel drum. <laughs> yeah, Jim, is that what your boat's going to be called? See it now. See it now. Wow, that's great. Yeah. I probably never plan on owning right. a boat, but but if you do, see it now. Um, 
that one's on the list. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, I don't know when people just decided that that was, you know, a steel drum. But um, when did well, the Little Mermaid come pro- out? There's probably some kind of cultural history as to why their steel drum played in the Caribbean. And that's why they do it. Uh, yeah, so I guess it's just Caribbean themed. That makes yeah. sense. I guess it's like, mm-hmm. um, all right. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. I don't know the sense. history of the steel drum. Even you though they, there like wasn't like a coral reef, reef necessarily or anything like that. I mean. The coral reef, the coral reef. No, I mean, but it's all tropical, beachy, you know, oceany. Ritmo tropical, anyway, if you will. La, 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 la. <laughs> I often will, my friend. Um, you know, it's funny. I was, I was listening. About I forget video. what I was yeah. even listening to. And someone was saying that they were a big, um, like a, a big like player of Dance Dance Revolution back in like in PS1 mm. times. And then someone else yeah. was like, oh, I didn't know you were a member of the revolution. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I, was like, I, was like, I had wow. never heard it re- referred to as the revolution before. That, I have to like clear my mental schedule just hearing that. I'm going to say that tomorrow at work. Right? No, we'll just hit up Joey Bones and ask him, you. about the, how's the revolution going? Viva la he's revolution. Like, he's actually still revolting. He is revolting. To this very day. <laughs> <laughs> he's still revolutionizing Is he a step maniac as well? I don't know. I don't think so. But I, I like to think one day I'll own a hard DDR platform. Oh, my for DDR. gosh. It is a pretty good workout and it's quite fun. La, 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 la. Anyway, <laughs> copyright striked. OK, so I did visual and I think that really goes. Um, the visuals pair really well with the auduals. Um, and I have a lot of different notes here and you touched on a bunch of them. I don't know anybody else. When I do a podcast, Jim touches on facts. I wrote 10 jillion different impressions. Humongous games are really big on impressions. Voices, I think, I think that's like another kind of cheesy. Just, it's another an imp- children thing, right? You just want to have like interactive, engaging, but voices. they don't even get the, in- but they don't even get the impressions. No, but they just know that they're different and fun. They can sound that they're not that they did because they're exaggerated, right? Yeah, and I like think when they talk like to a, a king, it could just be like, as well. "Hey, I'm the king." He's like, "I'm the king crab." <laughs> I, prefer, I prefer, "Hey, I'm the king." Hey, it's me, Mr. King Crab. How you doing? I'm the whiz. Yeah, but it's That's not. It's, it's exaggerated. I think it's for kids specifically. Yeah, I mean, just to be beyond stylized. I mean, it's just like you know, kid. Yeah, I can see what you're saying. It's very exaggerated, and kids like the kind of shit. A lot of energy, very fun. I particularly, I said I liked the music a lot. I thought the vibes were just like very chill with the music. There was like a lot of solos and like whoever made the music on this, shout out to them. They didn't give a fuck that this was for kids. They're like, I'm about to just start ripping. I think that they got some fucking Mount Gay rum going. I mean, the blazed one. They're like, Get fun. Yaruba, Yaruba. Exactly. They were real laid back. And I appreciate that. Sandals, Jamaica. When somebody says Amon, everyone what says say? Amon back. I thought it was Yaman. Uh, I don't know. Did you say did you say Ya backwards is A? No, I think it's Amon. I don't know. You might. You we might can, right. we can bigger, definitely right. not clip You're that. You're the in. big. Definitely not. NBC yeah. is going to come for our office throats. aficionado. Peacock. It's called is it Peacock? Oh. They will. The yeah. cock. I think they call uh, it. <laughs> One thing I uh, I really liked, and this is just like a little mini thing that happened in it. At one point, you have to free a fiddler crab. And when yeah. you, as he's talking to you, he's always singing. He's like, I'm trapped in a cage. I wish you would let me free. So, I, it, so uh, did you notice that he's like with his hand doing like the little fiddler, like playing a tiny I did, fiddle? Yeah. I was hoping maybe mm-hmm. he was going to do like a fiddler on the roof type type thing, but... If I was a free crab, unfortunately, he did not because that would be struck. Well, that movie might not have even come out. Was it from the 80s or earlier? I have no idea. Anyway, that part was good. I also have a note here that said the music reminded me of Lego Island. Don't even don't even. <laughs> Which we we'll eventually play. I'll have to figure out that. I wrote a lot of New York ethnicities and We're characters. We're going to have to buy a thought. physical copy. 
I'm not, which I'm we've been that. trying to avoid I'm, for I'm, everything. And I'm also fine with I'm also fine with buying the complete set. Well, yeah, I, wanna, I do kind of want to start buying the games. I also st- need to buy a fucking optical drive, which is only like twenty bucks, but it's only twenty. And then I need to buy a SATA cable so because all mine are used up. But no, buy no buy a USB one for twenty bucks. Oh, I could. Okay, they make a USB one. Yeah. I was gonna put if and I'm get, buying one, I'm just gonna leave it in the bay that's empty at the moment and just connect. Well, it. you could do that. Yeah, you have a desktop, man. Um, I also wrote the ARG song, which you mentioned. Yeah. Um, and now I want to get into the experience part. And okay. this is where the heartwarming moment is. Oh, Do you want to give a heartwarming moment, of like an intro song? Like a little... No, that's Jim. That's central. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. heartwarming. Yeah, the, you Jim, warm my heart you, you with sensuation. Be, Do you only know how to be sexy? Yeah. Don't you know how to be sweet? I'm too sexy for heartwarming. Yeah. Okay. So yesterday morning when I awoke, I had not played any of the game yet, <laughs> which was Tuesday. Okay. Although Jim had told me that we were playing this game and I figured I'd be able to make my way through it okay. Now, around 11 a.m., I discovered, because my thermostat told me, that my heat was no longer apparently working. What well, shout out Ecobee, it told me, it was like, hey, uh, I've been calling for heat for a while now and your temperature is actually going down, which is not the way heat normally works, which I appreciated. And then I realized, oh shit, my heat's fucked. So I tried figuring it out and... Dad was there as well, and we couldn't figure it out. And we even called our friend for wait, 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 about wait. general. Things. You had PP there with you. Peepaw? P- oh, you yeah. had PP. I told you he's Pop-pop? on. He's on the payroll, man. He was helping me put on put in mirrors into the gym. Oh, oh so I, sorry. now I can wait, look wait, at myself. Is this some sort of shrine scrolling. you've resurrected to me? What is it you mean by Jim? Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, we named it after you. <laughs> oh. Mm-hmm. And I put the mirrors in to look at myself All to right, see so how let's go. Warm my enamored heart. I am. Warm it and so I can yeah, chill it so back down. Let's go because I don't want it to be too hot for too long. Because then Bob had a bad day. Mm-hmm. Take him on down. I was fucking freezing. I was tired. It was just a real shitty day. And at the very end of the day, we went and picked up space heaters and I popped one down in my office so I could fucking sit there in the cold and play this game. Because... We will prevail. Nothing will stop CD Romp. Rompers unite. Reason so will I prevail. I had that set up. And this, the heat started to come on and this game was playing and it was just nice. I just felt genuine happiness playing it. It was very soothing. Everything, I was winning. <laughs> that was, it was going well. The game just worked. The scum VM works pretty damn good. And I just had like a genuinely very nice time. And I was like, thank God that this is what's happening right now and not fucking uh, Everquesters <laughs> or something Wow, <laughs> super frustrating. So if you're ever having a really bad day and you just need like PC retro food for the teenage soul, play Freddy Fish one because it's just nice. Everyone's nice. The music's nice. The vibes are nice. You'll be able to beat the game in like a, less than an hour. It's just a nice time. Yeah, it's, it and costs so about I'll $7. I'll probably always so. remember this. Yeah, I'll probably always remember Freddy, playing the Freddy Fish, sitting there with a hoodie and my beanie on and my space heater, freezing to death, but not giving up on living the dream. Together we romp. Together. Is that the romp. end? Are we done? Was that supposed <laughs> to be your end of the cast? Because <laughs> it was kind of, you kind it of wasn't put a bow particularly on it. The end I mean, of the, it was yeah, it wasn't particularly the end of the cast, but that was actually the end of all my notes. So the question is, I guess, Jim, do you have anything left to say about Freddy Fish One? I don't. I think we left it out, left it all out on the court. You know. Yeah, yeah, and I think you're right. That was an accidental good way uh, to end it, Jim. What's your score in points now? Now I know if you're listening, you heard the damn intro. All right, so don't get it twisted. This review is not a review. No, Bob, but, but okay. what? These but, points are enjoyment. But what if people enjoyment don't points. watch or listen to the entire thing and skip only to the like review and score? What do we do then? Okay. Warning. <laughs> These reviews are not reviews. Now, what now if they had skipped again, just bitch. after that? What do we do? What do Welcome we to do? Oh, you're confusing me. Uh, okay. What part am I doing again? Um, okay, so I think... This week on CD Rop, I shoot a robot and it shoots me back. Oh, my God. Do we record the part that I told you, you again didn't get my reference? Or was that in the unrecorded no, portion of this? Yeah, you again didn't get my reference. Essentially, anytime Jim makes a joke, I don't get it. Yeah. 
Yikes. And that's just our dynamic. Mm. But I often laughed at the things he says. Right. Like Grimlord and Hemlock. Well, yeah, but those weren't so jokes. It's hard to say, Ari, Jim, are you funny? No. Funny looking. Because <laughs> you weren't joking when you said that. So well, does that make you funny or does that make you accidental? I guess it's a question of are you laughing at me or with me? Which is the mean one? Mm, yes. That one. That's the one I picked. Comma, which is the mean one? <laughs> Jim, I've been making up theme songs to the Big Dog Sandwich Show. As Don't even. How yard, do we? How do we? My dog's in, how do we stop recording <laughs> right before you said that, and then start recording again and after then, you said that? And then start recording that show. <laughs> Big Dog Sandwich Show. Big, Big Dog do- Sandwich Now I'm just show. doing Fahoud. Big Now I'm doing dog Fahoud Sandwich dads. Show. Big Dog Sandwich Show. What? Yeah. Anyway, guys, somewhere down the pipeline, we'll get Big Dog Sandwich Show together. We'll, we'll, it'll be live action. That would, that would require recording things in person, which we've had at length <laughs> conversations about how you don't think is feasible ever again. But <laughs> but here's the thing. It is feasible, just not on a regular rollout schedule. <clears throat> As a special, we can do it. And then do them every so often. But anyway, every day. Jim, Got how it. many enjoyment points every day? I can't eat a sandwich every day, Jim. I'm low carb. Well, yeah, but they give me lettuce wraps. No, I have to wrap them in fruit. Oh, so fruit, fruit Jim, sandwiches. I appreciate you going around other people's YouTube channels talking about how many apples I eat. Wow, they have to know. <laughs> you, this poor woman. <laughs> we, we don't need to discuss. <laughs> you know where this is occurring. <laughs> I, I, unless you want, unless we can give specific. We shout can, out. yeah. Okay, yeah. Shout, shout out to something, Tina. Um, Shout out to something Tina on YouTube, my beloved this pretty poor wife. woman has, has to lug well. around just like sacks of <laughs> apples for you to eat every day. Like you're a fucking racehorse. <laughs> you know what? At, ca- cartoon I, horses always eat apples. Yeah, I, I think they just love it. it. Yeah. And I on think you can eat the core. I think you can actually eat the core of the apple. So if you want to do that. Yeah, the core. Eh, the core. Now, no, was that the Hey Arnold or Magic School Bus where they went into the stomach because there was like an apple tree in it? Right on the magic scuba, ride the river of lava. Hey, Arnold never went into a human being. Well. <laughs> well. <laughs> Helga G. Wow. Jim, how many enjoyment points would you give this game? Uh, well, you can call them whatever you want. No, no, no. I'll I mean, call them enjoyment points because I don't remember what I called them last time and I never will. Uh, yeah. I'm going to give this one like a 9.1. I really just like enjoyed playing the game and it can, it could be because like, the vibes were great. I knew it was going to be quick. Um, it was like fun to mess around with. It wasn't hard to figure out. And everything gave me like real good feedback. Like clicking on everything made things shoot around and make cool noises. And there were cool accents, fun music. It was just a good old time. Yeah, it was a good time. I mean, my only critiques would be things that would be unfair to critique. Yeah, I think it's it yeah, harder. I, it, things that it I would longer. be expecting out of an adult That's what game. She said. Yeah, you know, not not a children's game, but I think even considering it being a children's game, as a child-minded adult, I enjoyed playing. Yeah, and I appreciate how much effort went into a lot of different aspects of it. Like, there's real artistry there, and as Jim mentioned, there are so many. I think they're called click events. There's so many click yeah. events on every screen. It's insane. It must have took them forever to do, and it's one of those things that's like. Uh, What's it called when like you do a thing and it's like a lot of effort, but like people never appreciate it? Maybe labor of love. Mm, because horny frog syndrome. In theory, mm, bit of a grimlock. Mm. In theory, someone could go through the game and never really have to click on all the things that are there. I didn't click on all of them. I tried to click on There's, all of them. Really? Oh, yeah. Let's do a bit good for good gameplay footage. I'm gonna go and Jim said nine point one. I'm gonna say nine point oh. Hmm. Um, why do you hate this sl- game so much <laughs> Bob tell us why you hate this game um, it ended pretty quickly even for a kids game well see you 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 do that because you, you were able to you, in, in your mind as a as an adult brain you you have well, better navigation skills and you have better memory skills and you have better problem solving skills so I imagine yeah. as a child playing this game they will often forget where they just came from, where they've been to already, and what problems they've already solved and how to solve those problems. So there will be a lot of, not necessarily going around in circles, but it won't be as linear as an adult as it will for a child. So I think you're going to get like three hours maybe out of this game 
let's say conservatively, instead of the one hour Probably or less more. than you as an adult? I'd say that we need a new term for when things are meant for adults besides adult. Because <laughs> but porn I enjoy is really, really calling them adult. How about <laughs> yeah, mature? More, that sounds just <laughs> bad. And what do we say? 18 plus triple X. Yeah, we could say NC-17 maybe. No, I'm just kidding. I actually do give it a 9.1. I was going to give it the same score as you because I really did enjoy it. But it's hard to rank a kid's game like this. It's pretty quick, but um, very well made. And as I've said before, and I'll say it again. I'll uh, force my kids to play it or maybe one of my uh, nephews plop them down and be like, here, click on this. Don't destroy my computer. Try it. We've talked about this. There's no such thing as a nephew in law. So why not? That's probably why it's confusing because it's not your child. What do you mean? Why is there not a nephew-in-law? There's no such thing. Well, you just said it, though, so there is such a thing. No, but it isn't. It's not a real phrase. But you just phrased it, so it is. Yeah, I think it's like, you know, we'll say, you know, brother-in-law, sister-in-law, and then you'll know. But, like, for kids, you know, give them that extra little love. Just go straight. We're not going to say nephew-in-law. We're not going to add law in there for No, but it's title. legal. Just yeah, so you know, that's why it's legal. Jim, that's why Jim was confused, because he's like, wait, do I have a kid running around? Yeah, because he's because he's my only son. I was like, did he just attribute kids to me? <laughs> Let the children be attributed. Yeah, bring them into the gym where so, we worship him. <laughs> there you uh, go. Yeah, Jim. So yeah, I mean, um, I let me uh, say our um, reco spiel. Yeah, do that. And you do can that, tell us do about that. the game, and then I will. So um, yeah. thank. You. First of all, I'll just do a quick pre thanks. I'll give you a full thanks later. Thanks for making it this far. And if you have, no. you probably See, like this okay. show. Let me cut you. Let me cut you the fuck off for a second. Hold I, up. I thought, you just got I thought for a second. I thought for a second you were thanking me for saving this week <laughs> and finding the game after you picked the no. wrong fucking game for us to play. <laughs> no, but I won't you were not. I, won't. <laughs> I, won't. <laughs> <laughs> I only thank the viewers. The viewers will prevail. Oh my god! If you made it this far, we just want to say shout out and thank you. We appreciate it, and we're glad that you're enjoying. And that means that you might even want to be a part of the show by sending us a suggestion. So if so, send us an email to theboys, T-H-E-B-O-Y-S, at cdromp.com. Oh, actually, emails. Uh, after Tanner sent us another email. I got to check that one. It's a big reco guy. Shout out to you, brother. Um, and uh, let us know a game that you'd like to play. And also, uh, why? We would like to hear your story as to, you know, your enjoyment or did you ever play it or did you not play it or did you hear it was good or did you hear it was bad? And we'll read it on air. And if you don't write anything, I will make something up about you and it will be very sexual. So, you know, on, on the uh, that be a on the you. on the reco front, he was telling me the other day that he is appreciative of the fact that we release episodes early in the morning. So I think he said he was driving somewhere and he was able to download the most re- recent episode at like seven o'clock in the morning. I planned it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's like a big we thing, either like late at night or early in the morning for podcasts, because a lot of people drive to work and listen to them. Yeah. And I do the same thing. Yeah. I listen, listen and to as podcasts on my way very, to and from work every day. We're about split in our viewer ear earership. Uh, half the people are on the YouTube and the half the people are on various podcasting. Yeah, things, it was so. interesting. Shout I, out to both I sides. sent you those um, YouTube analytics the other day and how many people are watching on their phones. I think it was really? like 30 something percent. I was like, that's a lot of people. Yeah, that's kind of people like using their phones for things. I never use my phones for stuff like that. I actually do watch a number of YouTube videos on my phone, but not for any length of period of time. Usually for like mm. if it's like for like three minutes or something before I am like casting it to something else or if it's something I want to listen to, but like isn't on Spotify or something like that, you know. Or if you're watching like a Keanu Reeves screaming video at your desk while you're working. Well, no. Yeah, but those aren't on my phone. I, I need headphones for that. I can't watch Keanu Reeves screaming videos on my phone at my desk. Unfortunately. I would say that that would be in the description below, but I never seem to remember to do that. So maybe it will, maybe it won't. Keanu Reeves screaming maybe, videos? Yeah. Oh. Well, because I'm trying to start a tradition of things that we talk about in reference. I actually include a, a link to the video. So how about this? Never actually how about succeeded. before you actually take the effort to actually do things that you talk about doing, we force yeah. people to tell you that you need to do them. Because if people don't care about it, then why should we yeah. care about it? Leave a comment on one of the many platforms we're on if you'd like for me to start providing links to references that we made. For example, the Brad Pitt speaking Jamaican accent. Yeah. Is it? Patois? Fa- Patois? Yeah. I was going to say Fatwa. No, like, that's the, the, the put a kill on you. <laughs> yeah. That's I, totally different. I got a Fatwa. I got a Fatwa. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's a totally different thing. All right, so now we covered how you could recommend a game. Um, we almost played a reco. We probably play one next. Who knows? Jim, what game are we playing next week? Please titillate my titties. Mm, so, it's Please. interesting. This is a game that okay, we off to a good start that we have talked about recently. Actually, that you have talked about recently. Talk about a lot of things. It was released games. in the first half of the 1990s. Okay. It is a bit of a strategy game. A bit of a strategy game. It a has bit. a bit of, you know, kind of fantasy type themes or themes. There's a bit strategy, a bit of strategy, and a bit of fantasy themes. Yeah. Okay. So it's got bits of things. Yeah. It's not quite dedicated. I would no, and I would say there it's pretty overarching. Um, it has a lot of like crafting. I would say there's a lot of war also involved in it. I was going to say Warcraft. Yeah, it's really weird humans. that you fucking mentioned Warcraft because I have picked Warcraft, Orcs and Humans and we're of back 1994. To 1994. Yeah. Wow. 1994. Now, I've never played this game. Nor have I. I have not played Warcraft, Orcs and Humans. I'm excited. And you know, Jim, there's a lot of pressure on you for this. Why is because that? Because you've enjoyed like two to three games in a row at this point. And now we're coming up on our first Blizzard game. If you don't like this game, this is going to be bad for you. Um, your, your LinkedIn well, first is going to be blowing up. when I make it. Don't worry about that. <laughs> your LinkedIn is going to be blowing up if you don't like this one. I'm trying to remember who the um, who the uh, uh, like lead game designers Originator were from like Jim Blizzard North, and I I can't remember the fu- Jeff something like the lead game designer for Diablo. Foxworthy. Jeff Foxworthy, yeah. Interestingly enough, the Diablo team was totally different from the Warcraft team. No, yeah, they were actually two they, different. They, I mean, they do that studios. still. They like well, had I didn't them know originally. But they're completely different I, teams. I mean, now Blizzard again no, is but now I mean, like they different. were they were different studios, different companies entirely. So it so it wasn't part of Blizzard. And then they North merged then. them. So that was just yeah. Diablo there was, was Blizzard, Blizzard North. and Blizzard North. I don't remember how that worked. Which way, but. Stay a while and listen. Really good uh, audiobook on the history of uh, Blizzard and how the two studios. Maybe I'll actually on. listen to that. I know when you you told me about it, I'm pretty sure I downloaded it to my Audible account, and I mm-hmm. haven't. I'm, we listened to that it's, podcasting book, and that was the last book I listened to, and that was months ago now. It's got a lot of information. It's also a series. I only listened to the first one. Hmm. I didn't get. To I also I don't think I ever read any of the Diablo books. The I read lore, two Starcraft lore. books. Canon. I'm trying to remember if I read any of the Diablo books. I feel like I did. We ha- we definitely owned them. I could say that much. I would have been the one to buy it. Jim, do you think that let's say this gets this this let's say this podcast gets super successful. Let's not say like that, but continue. We want more of these brothers reviewing nineties things. And then we have to review kids' books like Goosebumps and Animorphs and stuff. Okay. That's it. That's the oh. idea. We call it Bookie Romp. Oh, no, I think we can call it like Bookie Bookie Bang Bang or something. <laughs> <laughs> better name. Bookie Bookie Bang Bang hashtag 90s kids only. Um, Is yeah. there anyone else with a podcast where they read Goosebumps and Animorphs books and then talk about it? Oh, or God. Is this one of those things where we're going to be three years from now, say, mention this episode? This, is, this it, will be it, the genesis. This will be This our, will be the genesis. Wow. Just like. When Chris Sawyer played around with trains and was like, wait a second, if I make this train a tycoon. If I just become an oil tycoon, but like a train (laughs) tycoon. (laughs) Wait a second. Are people still saying tycoon? Wait a second. This is too realistic. Yeah. I just listened to that one the other day. That's funny. (laughs) I guess we should end the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, guys, uh, I really appreciated that everyone had stopped by to hang out with me and my bro here. Um, we love you. We enjoy doing this, and we want to make more. So, please let us know how you feel. Subscribe, follow, comment, rate, all them kind of things. And don't forget, get your car washed. Get your car washed, y'all. We'll keep on romping. You keep on. Stopping. Just show up. Yeah, really. Just yeah, you don't have to do much actually. 
All right, have a lovely week. It's Wednesday, my dudes. We'll see you on the next Wednesday. Every Wednesday morning, we put out a podcast early in the morning. Maybe I'll put it out a little earlier now, seeing as people seem to... Well, you can do it Tuesday night at like 3 o'clock in the morning or something. No, I need to be there. I need to be holding its hand. Oh, you don't, but okay. I was actually had changed them to eight and then I changed yeah. it to seven thirty because that's mm. when I finished my workout around. Anyway, goodbye everybody. Have a great week. Thanks, Jim. Mm. I'll talk to you later. Love you, Jim. Yeah. Bye. I'm looking forward <laughs> to playing Orcs and Humans. Goodbye. Orcs and humans.